Welcome to this video all about how you can use SharePoint to build a quality management system. My name is Dougie Wood and I'm a Microsoft MVP. I got that award directly from Microsoft for sharing my knowledge with the YouTube community and speaking at public events. In fact, there's a picture of me recently speaking at the headquarters of Microsoft in London. As a SharePoint expert, I get asked all the time by loads of different industries, but specifically manufacturing, about building out quality management systems for things like ISO 9001 or 27001 using SharePoint. So what we've done is we've pre-built a package that you can install into your SharePoint for a fixed price, um, which actually has a lot of the features that you'll need straight off the bat. This system is built around a single SharePoint document library that we can see here. So for example, we can see that we've got all of our documents in here, our key policies, they all have to go through an approval process. So we can see what stage of the process they're in, whether they're draft, whether they're pending, as in waiting for approval, or whether they've been approved. All of the documents inside of our quality management system also have version numbers enabled, which means that we track both major and minor versions. When it's draft or it's pending, as in it's being worked on or it's waiting for approval, we'll always have a minor version. In this case, we've got 2.11 or 12.22 because that's what we're working on. We can also make sure that the end users will only ever see the latest published major version. So say, for example, if I was just a, a, an end user coming in to look at these documents, I would only see version 2.0 of the safety procedure because that was the last major approved version of the document. Also, if you do have an auditor that wants to look over the documents, you can also see a full version history of that document, which basically shows us everything which has happened on that document. So we can see all the changes, all the track changes are in place, and we can see exactly who's done what and when. So this allows us to go back and actually even view previous uh, versions or even restore back from a previous point in time. So say, for example, if I was on version 31, I could rev um, actually reverse this and go back to uh, creating version uh, the next version, which would be version 32, from content, let's say, from version 28. Now, it'll always keep track of all the changes, everything we make, and we can get back to everything at any point in time. Now, the document library also has some automations built into it, including a review date. So every document has its own review date. And there'll be reminders as it comes up to that review date sent to the marked as the whoever's marked as the reviewer of the document to come and review that document at that point in time. They would then come in, edit the document, make any changes that they need to, and then submit it for approval, which will then go to whoever's marked as the approver for that particular document. Once they have then had that email, they can either reject it, which goes puts it back into draft mode and sends an email back to the reviewer with their comments. Or if they approve it, it will then not only set the approval status to approved, it will then increment to the next major version number, publish it for everybody to see. It will then calculate the next review date based on the review period. So say, for example, if um, the review period was 12 months and it was 12 months from today, the next review date would be the 6th or the 3rd, 2026 in that case. Um, then it will kind of sit dormant and it will wait for that date and then it goes through the same process again where it will automatically put itself into draft mode and then email the reviewer asking them to come and make any amendments before it's then submitted for approval again. So that's how the review and the approval process works. Um, and then the final stage of this is actually we have the ability to track who has read these individual documents. So gone are the days of having to get someone to read a load of uh, policies and then fill out a, a signature in a, in a book somewhere in the office. You can actually track who has read these individual documents. So at the point of approval, and the document has then been approved and published as a major version, you'll notice that we have this what we call tracker groups here on the right hand side. Now, tracker groups are essentially going to look at um, a grouping of people, which could be based on their department, their job role, their location of wherever they are in the world, but essentially different groups of people. And we can tag either, um, well, we don't have to have the tags at all. We don't have to track every single document that's been read. We can tag with single groups or multiple groups as well. Or you might even just have a group which has everyone in the whole organization inside of it as well. Then what happens is an email is automatically sent to everybody that's in that group. And then an item will be then added inside of the policy tracker. 
So inside of the policy tracker, it's essentially a SharePoint list, um, which keeps track of every single document. So let's say, for example, this data protection policy, if I open this up, I can see that on um, the last publication of this, which was version 23, um, an email was sent to everybody in our IT team to confirm that they've actually read this specific uh, document. So basically, they'll get an email with a link to that document, and there's a button in the email which says, I've confirmed that I've read uh, and understood or acknowledged. We can change the wording if needs be. Um, but what that will do is it will come into the item in the uh, policy tracker, and it will not only mark them as, yes, they have read this, but also it will put down the accepted date and time that they clicked on that button. So that gives you a few things. One of those things is, let's say, for example, we ever realized there was a data uh, breach and we realized um, it was actually Hannah who had breached the data, she had leaked our data, we could pull her into a meeting and say, well, Hannah, you should know better because you confirmed that you read our data protection policy at this date and time. It also means we can quickly see who's not yet read um, the, the policy and we can chase them up or we could ask their line manager, for example. Now, they will get automatically chased as well for about a month. Um, they'll get notifications to check that. But you can always come in here as well and filter um, to find everyone who's not read specific documents. So if I was to then expand that out, I can see these are all the documents and these are all the people that have yet to confirm that they've read and acknowledge that particular policy document. As all of this is built inside of SharePoint, we actually have built a SharePoint interface at the front end, which again is completely configurable to your requirements, but it helps you navigate the control document system. So we can have these tiles and we can link them to whatever you like, but typically they'll go to like the document tracker that we were looking at just before, maybe documents which are expired, so these are the ones that you really need to be focusing on. Or maybe we could tag our documents. So we'll work with you to understand how it's best to tag and coordinate your documents so that you can filter and search for them afterwards. So let's say, for example, if you had ISO 9001 and ISO 27001, there's different documents which relate to those different accreditations, and you could tag them with ISO 9001 or ISO 27001 and use maybe these large tiles as a way of navigating to those particular uh, sets of documents. There's also some admin links, so you could do things like uh, see policies which are awaiting my actions, policies which are close to their review dates, policies which are pending review, or policies which are pending approval as well. So again, it's just fast ways that we can quickly drill in and find those key uh, documents nice and easily. If you think a system like this would benefit your organization, we do offer this as a fixed price product that we can deploy directly to your SharePoint. So one-off fee um, that basically gets you access to this to be installed on your environment. Now, if you would like a free demo of this, there's a link to contact us in the description below. That will basically allow you to go to our webpage with a contact form, put in your details, and we'll contact you to book in a one-hour um, meeting with one of our SharePoint experts to understand your requirements and show you in full detail this full system. We can answer any of the questions that you have, and we can also tell you the fixed price um, proposal for deploying this particular solution, which would include a bit of training and also some support hours for any follow-up that may be required. We'll discuss with you next steps and how we can deploy this to your particular organization. So if that all sounds good, click on the link in the description below. If you've got any other questions, you can use a comments feed, Give the video a like and subscribe to our channel for more SharePoint content. Thank you.